A Shana Tova, everyone. The other day I was driving, my little Shalom, two and a half years old, is in the back seat in his car seat, eating a snack. We're going for a drive, and all of a sudden he says in his sweet, innocent voice, I love life. And I'm thinking to myself, how pure, how innocent, how deep for this two and a half year old. And he continues munching on his cereal. And he says, life is my favorite cereal. <sighs> Today, I want to talk about life. You know, how many times are we going to be saying that word, Chaim, life, in our prayers over the next 10 days? Sefer Chaim, the book of life. Chaim Tovim, a good life. Zachreinu lechaim, remember us for life. Even if you're not davening so much, you'll definitely be drinking and saying lechaim to someone over the next week to life. Lechaim, lechaim to life. What should you have in mind when you wish someone or when you daven for chaim yourself? Now it's not Shalom's cereal that we are having in mind. It's something else. But what is it that we're really envisioning, dreaming? You know, it turns out, we read in the Parsha just two days ago on Shabbos, where Moshe tells the Jewish people, I've given two roads in front of you, two paths. There is going to be the cursing and the blessing. And you should choose life. What do those words mean? mean to choose life? Well, of course, the literal meaning is important. We are a nation that loves life, preserving life, guarding our life. We know that has real application during these times that we choose to get the vaccine. We choose to take the necessary precautions and listen to our medical experts. We choose to act responsibly and not, God forbid, recklessly. But I want to ask you a question. Is that all the Torah means when it says you shall choose life? Would I have thought without the Torah that we should be choosing death? When the Torah says the word choose, it implies there are two very appealing options in front of us. So of course, it means much more. It means we should choose not to live a superficial life, but live fully deeply a meaningful life, a life committed to a higher purpose. You know, all of us from time to time can ask ourselves, does it really matter that I've occupied, inhabited earth for this many years? What have I left here? How will people even know the difference when, God forbid, one day I'm gone? Is my life productive? That is what it means to live. I'm very honored this Rosh Hashanah to have my brother, and sister-in-law Daniel and Ita here. Um, just two weeks ago, tonight, they had a simcha in their family. Their son, Nassan, uh got married. The bride, Hanabina, um, Hannah, it was a beautiful wedding. But there was something about that wedding that was unique, sad. Hannah's parents, the bride's own parents, were not there. You see, Hannah's from Australia, and as many of you know, Australia has amongst the tightest COVID restrictions in the entire world. No one can go out, no one can go in, not even for a child's wedding. I'm not here to discuss pros or cons of that. No politics at Chabad, I'll leave that to them to determine. But I want to ask you a question. Imagine you were the bride's family or the bride. You set a wedding date during the time that it looks like things are getting better and now you find out your parents, God forbid, can't make it. What would you do? I asked Hanabina this question two days ago and she told me it was painful, it was emotional, they sent a message via Zoom that was played at the wedding, but my parents told me that I need to take this important next step in my life. That Chaim life doesn't mean surviving, it means growing. It means building a Jewish home and a Jewish family. And I should not be stuck. And I should take this next step, even though it would be painful that they were not there. Powerful. And I need to be clear again. I'm not talking about being careless. Guarding our health is an important mitzvah. 
That is still the literal meaning of choosing life. But today I want to go beyond that. Why is it that we want to live? And that is to truly live. Because living is not the same as existing. Existing means occupying space in our world. Living means plugged into something much deeper. Let me ask you. Our biggest heroes right now are the healthcare workers who are risking their health and who are being away from their family during this time. Would you say they are choosing life? And of course the answer is yes. An incredible life. A noble life. A mitzvah filled life. Us too in a different way during this time, especially now during COVID, have to choose to live. You know, one of the lines people say when they talk about health, they say, as long as you have your health, you have everything. That is all that matters. And I was thinking about that. Is that really true? Now, don't get me wrong. It is the most important bracha we can all have. And if you have your health, you could have everything. But is it in of itself the ultimate? I don't believe so. It is what makes it possible to then live fully. It is told that once the first Chabad Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe, wanted to bless one of his disciples, his name was Rebbe Yikusil Lepler, with long life. And he turns to him to give him this bracha of long life. And right away Rebbe Yikusil says in Yiddish, Obernisht Parashe Yarin. I'm not interested in the blessing if it's years of a peasant and he continues a life where we do not sense or hear godliness or do mitzvot. And I heard this story, I remember the first time, and I was thinking to myself, isn't that being a little fussy? Someone wants to give you a bracha for long life, there's only one word you should say, and that is, Amen. Maybe four words, Amen, Cain, Yehi, Ratzon. But to set qualifications and conditions, why? Why is that necessary? Maybe that's a bonus. Not only long life, but a long life that's full of mitzvot. But I think the answer is to Rabbi Kusil. The definition of Chaim itself was a life that was plugged into something higher. Without that, that was not Chaim. In Chabad tradition, actually, when you bless, when you drink Lachaim, person A says Lachaim. And person B says, L'chaim v'li bracha should be long life. That is a bracha for me and for others. So this year, when all of us pray for life, don't get stuck in the survival mentality. Yes, we want to survive first. We want a year of health. We want to end this madness. We want safety for the world. But we also want something much deeper. We're telling Hashem we are ready to live committed to something higher and I want you all to dream as you pray this year what does that look like what would it mean for you to really live this year when you ask the king of all kings for health what will you be using that health for when you ask for wisdom imagine mentoring young children when you ask for children imagine the ability to raise them as proud Jews who make this world a better place when you daven for wealth, and yes, we should daven for a successful year financially and think and dream about the most tzedakah you can give this year more than any other year of your life. And ask for honor and respect in order that you can be an ambassador for Judaism and for godliness and goodness. I'm in awe of people that I know that have grown so much during COVID while well, so many people in the world and understandably so have been focused on how can I survive? They have stepped forward. I know one individual who comp completed their conversion to Judaism this past year. Someone who became Shomer Shabbat used the struggles of COVID and the inability to leave to be fully Shabbat observant. I know of a businessman who without the business travel discovered what it is like to spend more time with his children and is now incorporating that even as travel opens up again. That's Chaim. That's life. That's what we're davening for. In 1929, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Yitzchak Schneerson, 
who was still living in Riga, Latvia, he traveled to America for six months to inspire American Jewry and to raise funds for the millions of Jews who were still in the former USSR and, and, and needed help so badly. And he comes to Chicago and he's told that in Chicago there's this business tycoon, came to America as a poor tailor, then opened a manufacturing company, now has numerous clothing companies, sadly lost their faith, lost their tradition, was quite um, antagonistic towards Judaism at that time. But the Rebbe says, I still want a meeting with him, and he arranged a meeting in respect to who the Rebbe was. This businessman agreed to a meeting, and he walks in, and the man takes out a check right away, didn't want to make it a lengthy meeting. Rebbe, what do you need? How much are you asking for? And the Rebbe says, I didn't come here for any money. You didn't come here for money? What did you come for? And he shows his black coat, and he shows there's a button that's dangling from it. He says, I heard you're a good tailor. Can you please fix this button on my coat? To which his tycoon says, Rebbe, you think I'm crazy? You didn't come from Riga, Latvia, 4,200 miles away in order for me to fix a button. To which the Rebbe says, your soul didn't descend from the spiritual realms, from the godly worlds to inhabit a physical body, to enter this physical world, to live now in America, just in order to make hundreds or thousands or millions of dollars. That's not why your soul came. Your soul came for much, much more. Those words made a profound, profound impact in this person's life. So Rosh Hashanah is the day we all remember why we are here in the world, not just to occupy space, not just to survive, not just to make it through COVID, but to live deeply, impactfully, and do mitzvahs. God should bless us all with a healthy year first and foremost, literally, and all those who are in need of a recovery. Please, God, this year should have a refuah, shlema, a complete and speedy recovery. Those that need health and strengthening with mental illness or any emotional challenges should find that nechama, that comfort and that strength. And we should all use that health to live deeply, to choose life, to dream of the mitzvahs that we, please God, will be able to do this year. L'chaim, l'chaim velivracha.